Okay, welcome everyone to my continuation of what is algebra. Today, I would like to tell you about what I call the calculus of ideals, or in other words, why ideals behave like numbers. So the main idea or the main philosophy here is as follows. So if you have some algebraic structure, like a ring, let's say we are doing ring theory, and you have a natural notion, like an ideal, then whatever kind of collection of this natural notion should kind of reflect the original structure. So ideals themselves should have enough structure to basically form a ring. They don't quite form a ring, as we will see, they form a semi-ring, but uh, cl close enough. And as soon as you understand this philosophy, it's kind of clear that you want to generalize uh, notions from that you know from integers to ideals. Like you want to have a notion of a prime ideal, like prime number or a minimal ideal or a maximal ideal, something like that. Okay, so let's just jump right into it. And I have a running example and it's this one. It's a very easy and still very illustrative example. So the only thing I do here is I take coefficients zero, one, two, three. So I take everything modulo four, so four is already zero, right? And I basically want to write down polynomials with those coefficients, but I'm using a, a trick here such that things don't get infinite. Uh, I just say whenever you see an x square, it's zero. And of course, this means if you see an x cubed, it's zero. If you mean, see anything bigger than an x itself, it's already zero, any bigger power. All right, so to get started, let's do this calculation together. So 3 plus 2x would be an element of my ring, and I could multiply it by itself. So, and you would just completely naively do this calculation. So three plus two X is nine plus 12 X plus four X squared, right? But I just told you that four X squared is zero, so X squared is zero and everything divisible by four is also zero. So this dies, this dies and nine modulo four is one. So actually this element times itself is one. So this element is invertible in this ring. Similarly, I claim that, um, well, one is invertible in this ring. Okay, one is the unit in this ring. Three is invertible as we have just seen. Three times three is nine. Nine is one modulo four. But a lot of things are here invertible in this ring. And the general element, as I said, is of this form. It's just a plus bx. And I claim a plus bx is invertible if and only if um, a is in uh, one or three. And then you can kind of construct the inverse uh, along the, these lines. Okay, so that's my ring that I want to start with. And I want to write down ideals in this ring. And I claim this is how it looks like. You have this nice lattice structure of ideals. You have the ring itself at the, at the top. Then there's a certain ideal and it splits into finer ideals, three finer ideals. They merge again together into a very fine ideal and then there's a zero ideal. Um, yeah, so let me move this a little bit to the top. Oop. Um, so that's in this zero ideal. This is how it looks like. And the way I like to draw this is that this is inclusion. So the big one is at the top and the very small one, the zero ideal is at the bottom. And I just wrote them down in terms of um, sets, how they look like. And we come back to this in a second, but just this is what you would do. If you would verify, would like to verify that you can easily pause the video and, and see whether you agree with my calculation. So let's have a look at this one, for example, we have the elements 0x, 2x, and 3x. And whatever you multiply to those elements, I claim you still stay in the same set. Remember, an ideal was just something like if you have an element from your ring and you multiply it uh, to any element in, in I, you still ended up in I. And in this case, it's commutative, so I don't even care for the difference between left and right. Okay, so this picture will appear several times, in particular now, because I now want to write the picture, this is the same ring at the top, of course, it's just R. And now I want to write down the picture a little bit, uh, well, this is very overwhelming, looks very big, uh, in, a, in a smarter and slicker way. So actually I think, I just want to write down two with round brackets instead of this beast here. And by that, I mean exactly what is written down below here. This means all elements that are of, that are of the form R, which are something in here times two. So everything that is of the form R times two. 
Um, for example, um, yeah, for example, uh, x plus one could be r, and you could take it times two, so you would get two x plus two would be in my ideal. So this is in here. And let's check 2x plus 2. Indeed, I did this calculation at least uh, correct. This calculation was at least correct. And the same notation for all the others with a slight tricky one that this one here has is actually 2 comma x, which means it has two generators. So all elements are now of the form 2 times r for r an arbitrary element times 2 plus r prime times x. And that's almost everything. And you should to check that this is actually the set here. For example, of course, uh, two, two plus x is just, um, yeah, two plus x for r and r prime equals, uh, r and r prime equals one, right? And I marked here those generators. So this is a generator here, this is a generator here. And this, yeah, well, okay. Um, these are the generators here. And the kind of funny fact which I'm using here is this is the same as actually two and two plus x, which I wanted to stress. Um, because why? Well, because you can also take sums. So an element in, in this ring, for example, would be two plus two plus x, which is x. Because two plus two is four, four dice, which is just x. So writing this or this is the same. And yeah, so you can also consider this is a generator, as this is a generator, or you can take this one and this one. So any two elements from, from this three element set. And otherwise you have those generators here. This one, this one, this one, this one. And this is just a slicker way of writing it. And there's another way of writing it. Uh, so let's have a look at this one. So I actually, um, so here's two plus x again, so two plus x, but now written with brackets around. And by that, I exactly mean the same thing. It's, it's the ideal, the sum of the ideals is exactly the same, as I just said. And here I've written two times x in exactly the same way as here, but now with round brackets. And by that, I mean the product of ideals, which are all elements of the form r times i times j in this case. So r is an element of my ring and i is an element in i and j is an element in j. Right? So in this case, i is, is an element in two and j is an element in x. x. It's, not, it's not x, it's an element in x. And it's not two, it's an element in two. So it could be either of those. And you could still verify that you get the same thing. Um, and otherwise, not much changes. I still have this nice picture with r on the top. Uh, and then it goes down. To something that it branches and comes back again, and there's a zero. And it turns out, if you look at this, then the sum is first of all an operation on ideals. So this gives an addition on ideals. The product, because this one actually secretly is also two times, let's say, two plus x, and it's also the same as two plus x times x. Well, which is a coincidence of this of, of this example, but this is just what it is. So you have a product operation for all um, ideals, and it gives you a multiplication on the set of ideals. And even better, this thing here is 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 clearly kind of an upper bound, a supremum of 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 everything else. So this contains two and contains x, and it's the smallest thing that contains two and x, while this one, the intersection, maybe this color, is the uh, yeah it cont uh, is contained in two and is contained in x and it's the biggest with the property that it is contained in two and it is contained in x, so it's an infimum. So this structure of ideals that you see here in this example, well, it has an addition like the natural numbers. It has a multiplication like the natural numbers. It has an order. Remember, I read things from bottom from top to bottom, so they get get smaller as you go down. 
There's an order which has an infimum and a supremum. And in this case, actually a maximum and a minimum. So it really looks like the natural numbers. Um, uh, that's exactly the formal statement. A slight warning before, before I go to the next page. It's a bit confusing. The intersection of, in, uh, of two ideals is an ideal. The union of two ideals is not an ideal. So you need to really take the sum here, not the union. And you can see this. So let's, let's have a look. So the union of let's say this set and this set would not contain two, as you can see. Two wouldn't be in the union, but two is in the sum. And you need two in this ideal, uh, in, in this union to make it an ideal. So just, just keep in mind that the intersection is an ideal, but the union is not. And in general, um, in this case, again, the product is the intersection. In general, they're different. The intersection is, is bigger in general. In this case, they are the same. But anyway, um, what I wanted to say, or what is really important, is that on the set of ideals for a given ring, and this even works if you uh, are in a non-commutative setup, then you just have to be careful with left and right. But anyway, they form a, what is called a semi-ring and a lattice. So semi-ring just means exactly the same properties of a ring, but you drop the condition that uh, addition has an inverse, like in the natural numbers. So if you want to think of an example of a semi-ring, the natural numbers. You have an addition, you have a multiplication, they do exactly what you want, they're compatible with one another, they distribute over one another. Um, but addition does not need to have inverses, so you don't have a negative element. And yeah, um, as you can see, it's a bit strange here, because this is a zero element, and addition goes in this direction. So it always goes away from zero, exactly like it as in the natural numbers. So you, you don't have an additive inverse ideal, right? It's just a semi ring, but otherwise it's exactly the same. And it's also a lattice. And this is exactly what I just said before. Um, you have a supreme and an infimum, you have an order and the order is, is, is the inclusion order. And again, the standard example of a lattice is a natural number, are the natural numbers. So natural numbers is the example of a semi-ring, uh, which is also a lattice. And ideals of a general ring reflect that one-to-one, -one, which is really, really funny and nice statement, actually. So ideals really do behave like numbers, right? Ideals are like numbers. And it's, right, it gets even better, right? If R is a unit, then it has a unit itself, like in my example, then actually the unit and the multiplication is, so multiplication, it's kind of fun. So addition goes in this direction and multiplication goes in this direction. So multiplication makes things smaller. That's my, my, maybe a bit confusing. And addition makes things bigger. Uh, anyway, the unit uh, is always the ground ring itself, if it has a unit. And if R is commutative, then so is this collection of ideals which is here the case because I've chosen a commutative example. And that's pretty nice, right? You have ideals, uh, you have an addition on ideals, you have a product on ideals, you have a notion of order on ideals, and you behave li literally like the natural numbers. So what would you do if you know that? Well, what you would do is you just take your favorite um, property of a natural number and you would try to generalize it to ideals, right? For natural numbers, you would, assigned to different natural numbers, different properties. You would call them prime or whatever. And you do exactly the same with ideals. For example, the notion of a maximal ideal should be fairly straightforward. It's maximal. So this one is, for example, a maximal ideal. You never, so when, whenever you talk about minimal or maximal, you never consider as a trivial ones. So those two ones are trivial, called trivial ideals. So maximal ideal, this is a minimal ideal. Um, this is the only prime ideal. That's a bit tricky. So what is a prime ideal? Um, a prime ideal is the following. So when, whenever you think about prime numbers, there's a slightly better definition than the standard definition, um, an equivalent definition. Maybe I shouldn't call it better. It depends on your taste, but it's certainly better for ring theory, which means P is a prime number. If P divides A, B implies P divides without loss of generality A or B, B divides B if you want, or, okay? 
So um, four, for example, is not a prime number because four certainly divides two times two, right? But four divides neither two nor two. So four is not a prime number. And you generalize this for a prime ideal. So an ideal is called prime if whenever a product is in your ideal, at least one of the elements is in that ideal. And you can check that this is true for this one here. But surprisingly, and this is this is where you have to be careful because you're generalizing something, not, not everything you have seen before will go through uh, on the nodes. So for surprisingly, maybe this is not a prime ideal. How can we see this? Well, if, you, if, if we look at it, it looks like everything is just divisible by two and everything is fine, but it has this funny element zero. Of course it does. Uh, and zero is actually X times X, right? So zero is in here and it's X times X, but two doesn't neither divide X nor X. Well, X does not divide X. And you can go on. There's a notion of a principal ideal. These are ideals generated by one element. So this one is not principal. All the others are. And you write down more and more and more notions. Uh, Wikipedia has a long list. It's linked in the description. And they all kind of generalize properties of numbers that you would like to see. Um, anyway, so that's it for today. So to wrap up, ideals are the right notion in ring theory. Um, and they kind of mimic uh, the properties of a ring. And in particular, they, they behave like numbers, like natural numbers in this case. So everything you know from natural numbers should have some analog for uh, some reasonable analog for rings. And yeah, just think about a property of natural numbers that you want to generalize. And there's probably uh, a notion for ideals as well. Uh, anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video and I also hope to see you next time.